Hey, well, more World Entertainment, and this is the review for episode 6 of Rings of Disaster. Again, not a hell of a lot happens. It's going to be very quick. An, an awful lot of crap talk, that's all really. However, the episode does open with a scene that is hilarious. Unintentionally, but it's hilarious. It's Don Lemnus running through a forest. That's not the funny part. The funny part is how he's actually running because I'm not messing here. He looks like he's running because he's holding in a crap. It's like he's got hot boiling poo poo and he needs to get rid of it as quickly as possible. Just the way he's running, he's running like his butthole is clenched. But he comes across uh, two orcs, at least you see two orcs, who are de seemingly deserting Adar and his whole mission. This is where this also gets funny, because they're literally talking to each other, going, like, I don't care what they call us, we're not dying for Adar's beliefs and all this crap. And another orc comes up behind Don Lemonis, and he kills that one, right? But the other two who are literally just saying, we're not dying for that cause, end up fighting Don Lemonis and instantly dying, without him even having to look at them. And he finds some sort of map or something in one of their wristband things. Um, and that's all we have with him. And then we go to Celebrimbor, who is losing it. He's forgetting names. You know, he's getting so manipulated now that he's almost like turning to the dark side but he's getting manipulated he's losing his cool with people and stuff and all you can really think about when you see it is the you know the way he's acting he can't remember his apprentice's name it just looks like this daddy chill what the hell is even that yeah <laughs> the daddy needs to chill and of course hellbrand comes in and manipulates him and he comes down and talks to all the other elves and basically he's like oh you know i'm taking charge uh, he mustn't be disturbed he wants me to do this and that blah 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 and he basically relieves all the other smiths of their duties and stuff at the same time um they he's struggling to make the nine rings silver for some reason won't work um whatever he's trying to do but they've run out of mithril and the dwarfs have not brought more so Hellbrand, Sauron, Adatar, whatever you want to call him, is going to go to Khazad-dûm to try and get more. And we just have a boring conversation with Adar and uh, Gladriel, who he's just trying to say why he brought her there. And it's a big nothing scene. He shows her the crown. He's like, I'm the one who's slayed him. And I was this and that. And you're like, if you're talking about you need her to join you to fight against Sauron, you didn't exactly slay him then, did you? But he also questions her, like, Halbrand is Sauron, isn't he? And she doesn't answer. And then we got to Farazan, who's putting Thingy Bob on trial. Um, and it, it, it's a Lindale. He has him on trial. Basically wanting him to renounce his um, loyalty to the Queen and give it to him and all this crap. And he renounces his crimes, but doesn't renounce Muriel and says she's the true queen so he he was going to let him go but now one of their the other advisors or something was like hey we should put him on trial with one of these big sea worm things remember the big worm thing that attacked the ship that hellbrand was on yeah one of them things uh, if it deems you innocent then you're innocent whatnot then we have a boring conversation with tom bombadil and uh gandalf but not gandalf but it's totally gandalf who just had a vision of Nori and they're talking crap. Nori, of course, then is having a conversation with the other Harfoots that aren't Harfoots. They're snails or something. A snail. Smiles. I think they're called Smiles, something like that. And um, Poppy hooks up with the other dude and they're like, oh, we gotta leave. And then Bombadil brings totally not Gandalf to um, an area with all these dead type of trees and apparently they're the staffs and he has to make the choice to go out and get them then we get to this bit this bit is just ridiculous so it's hellbrand or sauron showing up to Kazadum to talk with the king to get more mithril and he's gonna offer him crap now when the scene opens we're seeing all the this herds of gold being put in front of the king we then see 
Uther in the fort walking up to the king going, Father, you summoned me? And he's like, no. But he did, and it's uh, Hellbrand. And he's there asking for a meatball, and he's like, what can we give you? You know, we can supply wood for your endeavours to mine more and stuff. And the king rejects all the offers, and during the four things, he's finally, you know, come to his senses. And because Hellbrand tells him, like, oh, there's an army of orcs, and we need meat real now more than ever, blah, blah, blah. And basically what Durin, King Durin, is planning is, he's like, well, the people who have the mithril will be undefeatable, so we can demand what we want. And then him and Durin the fourth have a bit of an argument about the ring and yada yada yada. And it's like, <laughs> it, it's just this back and forth of take the ring off, no, take it off, no. And you're just like, good Christ, this is stupid. And it's, it's just ridiculous. And it's like, what, why? And yeah, it's just whatever. And then Disa wants to basically start kind of a mutiny almost. She's like, he's lost his mind. We need to block the people from digging and stuff. And it, you kind of get a, a Luke Skywalker moment. He's like, hey, he's still in there. I, I sense the goodness in him. Then Thunder Tits goes to talk with her daddy, Elindel, and tries to convince him to uh, bow down to Farazan. Which he brings Mariel. Mariel demands, like, commands him to do it. And he's like, no. Then we go back to the workers coming to dig more for, or I'm assuming Mithril. Uh, Disa sings and they're like, is that supposed to scare us out? She's like, no. And she basically turns into Batman. Someone's all the bleeding bats that chased them off. And then we go to Farazan going to have this trial of dumping a Linnell into the water. Where, you know, the sea is always right. But Mariel comes walking up and goes, hey, I'll take his place, seeing as he's doing it in my name. And Farazan's not up for that, but the, he's like, is, is she allowed to do that? And the advisor does, yeah. So they dump her into the water and the thing <laughs> finds her innocent. <coughs> and all of a sudden everybody's kind of, oh, all hell, Queen Mariel again. And it's funny because when Elindel originally said, you're not the true king, Muriel's the king, queen and blah 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 all the people that were in the area were booing and you know basically calling them a heretic kind of thing and now they're all cheering they're like yay queen Muriel is like okay um, and we basically get uh, Gladriel willing to work with Adar and our, he's like oh, you know you didn't think I was going to try and take on Sauron with one little army did you and shows her massive and she realises that's exactly what Sauron wants. He doesn't have an army of his own. Adar's brought him an army. Adar doesn't believe her. And blows for the attack. And then Celebrimborn is basically sitting there. And uh, he thinks he's hearing the the alarm. And Hellbrand manipulates him. And ha he, as he runs out of the tower, he sees like it's daytime. And everybody's happy. And he gets convinced to go back and work on the crap. And... All you can think of when you see this guy, because he's like losing it, is like this. I'm in a glass case of emotion! Yeah, he's pretty much in a glass box of emotion. <laughs> he doesn't know where he's coming or going. And it ends with the war kind of starting and whatnot, and Hellbrand standing there with a big smile on his face. It's just stupid. Nothing's happening. Everything's so slow, and the conversations are boring. You know what I mean? Like... Hellbrand manipulating Calabrimbor in such a way, and like it's becoming so obvious now, and why he can't see it. All you can think of the way he's acting and talks with him, it, it, it's kind of like he's in full control now, and it's basically him screaming at him all the time, like, you gotta make the rings. Durin and <laughs> Durin and Durin, their conversations are just so stupid. It's the same conversation over and over again, with nothing being said. It really is ridiculous. Like, it, it just goes on and on and on. And all you see when, like, <laughs> how much of control Sauron now has, it's he's basically talking to uh, Celebrimbor like this. You are mine now. You belong to me. You're not going to have your mommy's run behind you anymore and wipe your little tushes. No more complaining. No more Mr. Kimblev to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. Yeah, he's in charge and... No more running to your mommy. But uh, that's it. That's 
the entire episode and nothing happened. So obviously the next two episodes are gonna be that two that they said will be um the two episode battle. It's it's so stupid. The conversations are nothing, they're mind numbingly stupid and hard to keep track of. And you know, uh oh by the way, Anatar all of a sudden has Mithril to give to Celebrimbor to work on and it's already refined down and stuff and it's like where did you get that? You literally just left Casa Doom. You didn't do anything there. Why you were there, by the way, makes no sense. But it's just like, where did you get that? And there's no answer to that question. It's just ridiculous. And it's it's going nowhere. And it's, oh, it's horrible. It's just horrible. But thank God there's only two episodes left. So with that, I shall leave it there for this one. So like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know the drill. Cheers, and I shall catch you in the next.